for any positive integer number k the factorial k factorial is defined as a product of all the integers from 1 and k inclusive so for example k factorial will be k times k minus 1 all the way down to 1 let s at n denote, denote the sum of the first n factorials so for example s at n would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1 and so on find the remainder when s24 is divided by 8 so s at n according to their definition is n factorial plus n minus 1 factorial plus n minus 2 factorial and so on all the way down to 2 factorial and 1 factorial okay so that's the definition and then they give us this s24 so uh, sorry s of 2024 i should say so that would basically just be 2024 factorial plus 2023 factorial plus 2022 factorial and so on all the way down to 2 factorial plus 1 factorial okay all right so then what they're saying is when you have this number and you divide by 8 what is the remainder okay shouldn't be too big of a deal because i'll show you why every one of these has an 8 in it so 2024 factorial if you divide by 8 there's an 8 in there right I'll just do it up here 2024 factorial is 2024 times 2023 times 2022 and so on all the way down to times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 2 times 1 so there's an 8 in there so if you divide this whole thing by 8 there's no remainder the remainder is 0 you got it the remainder is 0 not the number I and mean, there's gonna be some number obviously but the remainder is 0 so I'm just gonna write out just a few of these and then we will get to uh, every single one will have an 8 until you get to I think 7 factorial well even that is not true but let me explain 8 factorial, obviously, it's 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. So when you divide by 8, its the remainder will be 0. But let me just write them out. Now, I, wa I want to explain it. So I'll write out all the other ones. 7 factorial, 6 factorial, and so on. So this is actually not equal. I shouldn't put an equal here because I've started to divide by 8. So that's not equal to the previous. So that's actually cor incorrect mathematics. I just wanted to correct that. Okay, so let's discuss this. And one more, 1 over 8. Okay, so the, the, this guy will have, we're, we're just talking about remainders now. So remainders. That one that I just circled will have a remainder of 0 because there's an 8 in there. This has an 8. Everything will have an 8. This obviously has an 8 in it. 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. But now let's see, what is 7 factorial? I don't know. I mean, what I mean by that is um, when you take 7 factorial and divide by 8, what is the remainder? That I can't immediately tell you. So I'm just going to write out what is 7 factorial, the actual number. 6 factorial, uh, very similarly. Uh, let's see here. I think 6 factorial... Sorry, I think I wrote the remainder rather than uh, the 5040 zero, zero is 7 factorial. And then 6 factorial, that's 720 over 8. And then 5 factorial is 120 over 8. 4 factorial, I believe, is, I, should, I should be able to figure that out in my head. That's 24, I believe. And then 3 factorial is 6, and then 2 factorial is 2, and then 1 factorial is just 1. Okay, so this is what we are left with at this point. Now let's figure out what are these actual remainders. So when you take 5040 and divide by 8, the remainder is 0. Okay, not the number, just the remainder. Remainder is what we're interested in. 720 uh, divided by 8, that remainder would also be 0. 120 divided by 8. 120 divided by 8 would give a remainder also of 0. 
24 divided by 8 also gives a remainder of 0. 6 divided by 8 uh, gives a remainder of 6, and then 2 would give a remainder of 2, and then 1 would give a remainder of 1. So we have a total remainder of 6 plus 2 plus 1, which is 9. But remember, we have to divide that by 8 because we're interested in remainders. When you divide 9 by 8, you get 1 with a remainder of 1. So that is the answer to this question. David wanted to calculate the volume of a prism with an equilateral triangular base. He was given the height of the prism as h equals 15 and the height of the base as h equals 6. He accidentally swapped the values of h and h, big H and little h, in his calculations. By what number should he multiply his result to get the correct volume? All right, well, the volume will be calculated by the area of the base multiplied by the height of this figure, this, this shape. So let's see, can I do this immediately or do I have to figure something out here? Uh, yeah, I have to figure out the area of the base. So the base, they tell you, is an equilateral triangle. Okay, so that helps. So if it's equilateral, let me just, well, see if I can draw an equilateral triangle. And let's see here, they told me, which one, which, which one should I do first here? I'll do the, the h equals 15 first. Yeah. Okay, so if h equals 15, area of the base times 15 is the calculation, but I gotta figure out the area of the base. So the area of the base, hmm, how do I do that? Do they give me any uh, such values here? Oh yeah, this, this six. Oh, I got it, I got it. They were using the same word, that's why I got confused, height and height. But this second height is the height of the base. It's this distance here in the diagram. Ah, okay, I got it. So this is six right there. Okay, and then uh, this is obviously 90 since I drew a, uh, well, it even shows you 90 right there. And since it's equilateral, that's 60 and that's 30. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And in any such triangle, the ratio of the sides are 2, 1, and root 3, correct? So if this, let's say you call y, that means that y over 6 is the same as 1 over root 3. So y is basically 6 over root 3. And then the area would be 1 half base times height, 1 half base. The base is actually 2y, so that would be 12 over root 3. And the height, well, that's 6, this guy. So there you go. So let's see, what, that, what does that give me? Uh, 12 times 6 times 15, so 540 over, um, I can just divide by 2 because it would be, I actually did 6 times 6, 36 times 15. Uh, yeah, so that would be 540. And then over root 3, and then if you want, you can rationalize the denominator, and when you do, you'll get 180 root 3. Okay, so that is basically the volume calculated when the height is 15 h the big h is 15 so let me just put that here just in case we forget h is 15 that is what this this was this number now what we have to do is figure it out for the other scenario this is the this is the correct way uh, of figuring it out then what they're saying is that when he actually calculated his he switched the numbers so he actually wrote the big H to be 6 and the small h to be 15 so let's do that so pretty much the same thing volume this time is 1 half base times height times fifth times the height which is 6 in this case and then similarly we'll just do that triangular thing and this time it's 15 and again same thing uh, 60, 30, so the ratio, if, if we call this, uh, whatever you want to call it, x this time, then that would basically mean that x over 15 is the same as 1 over root 3, right? It's the same kind of calculation that we did up there. So that basically means that x is 15 over root 3. 
Okay, so we can now figure this out, 1 half base times height. The base is actually 2x, so that would be 30 over root 3. And the height is 15 this time. And therefore, this is going to be 1, 3, 5, 0 over root 3. And then if we rationalize the denominator, it comes out to 450 root 3. Okay, so now the question is, what do you have to multiply this by to get this? Because this is the correct uh, value. So what do you have to multiply this by to get that? Well, 450 root 3 multiplied by some number, whatever you want to call it, let's just call it n, is equal to 180 root 3. So n would basically be 180 or root 3 over 450 root 3. And I believe that is 180. The root 3 is cancel, and that just becomes 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is the answer to this question. Let a, b, c, d be four distinct integers such that the min of a and b is 2, the min of b, c is 0, the max of a, c is 2, the max of c, d is 4. Min of a, b, and max of a, b denote respectively the minimum and maximum of two numbers a and b. Determine the fifth smallest possible value for a plus b plus c plus d. So this is going to require some analysis here. I'll, I'll label this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, so you know what I'm referring to. OK, so if we first, let's just look at the first two, one and, 1 and 2, those two guys. Basically, if the min of a and b is 2, then that means that one of these is 2, right? Now, I don't know which one is smaller, A or B, but so let's just go with A. Does it say anything? It just says that they're distinct. It doesn't give us any order, does it? So let's just work with this for now. Let's say that A is the 2 guy, and therefore the B has to be greater than 2 because the minimum of those 2 is 2. Okay. And in a very similar way, let's an analyze the B, C guy. The minimum of B and C is 0. So since B has already been uh, kind of characterized as greater than 2, that means I deduce that the C is the 2. And then, of course, the B remains greater than 2. You see what I'm saying? So that's just an analysis of the first two of those equations. Okay, let's keep going here. Now let's look at 3 and see what we get. The max of A and C is 2, the maximum. So we already uh, denoted a as 2. That means c would be less than 2, right? Makes perfect sense. We're, we've, we're consistent with what I've done up here. So, so far, everything's going well. And then let's look at 4. Let's see if we can match this one. The max of c and d is 4. So since c <coughs> has already been characterized as being a less than 2, and also we call it 0, that makes me think that the D is the 4. So the D is the 4, and obviously the C is less than 4, and that's consistent with the findings. So, so far, if I combine everything, I've got A is 2 up here, B, uh, B, we don't know. B is greater than 2. That's the only thing I have from this guy. C, right here, I have denoted as 0. And D, I have been able to uh, figure out, is 4. All this matches. So what they want is A plus B plus C plus D. What is the, what do they say? Fifth smallest value, okay? So let's plug in these numbers. So it'll be 2 plus well, B I don't know, so I'll just put in B, 0 and 4. So this is basically 6 plus B. So this is what we have to work with. 6 plus B. Okay. And the only thing we know is that B is greater than 2. And also there's one very important, uh, they even put it in bold, that they're all distinct. A, B, C, and D are all different numbers. So let's see. B we know is greater than 2. So it's got to be 3... 4, 5, 6, 7, right, 8, 9, and so on. 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12. I, I, I don't think we need to go much further, but I just wanted to put that out there. 
Now let's see. Can it be three? I think so. Can it be four? No, because D is four and they're all distinct. So it cannot be four. You got it? Can it be five? I think so. Can it be six? I believe so. And I don't see any other restrictions here for all of these. So let's plug in these values of B and see what we get. When B is 3, this 6 plus B becomes 9. When B is 5, this 6 plus B becomes 11. When B is 6, the 6 plus B is 12. When B is 7, it's 13. When B is 8, it is 14. And what do they want? The fifth smallest possible value fifth smallest oh, okay whatever fifth smallest well this is the smallest second smallest third smallest fourth smallest fifth smallest okay so I'm pretty sure the wording of the question uh, I understood and therefore the answer would be 14